Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to this morning's study. Uh, today, we're going to talk about something that, uh, a, a subject matter that actually came to mind because a scripture floating through my mind as I was half awake and half asleep. And so we, I decided to research this and the thought behind this, and the thought was promoted behind some teachings and some uh, messages that I have been hearing on my own in my own time. And it provoked me to have this thought that to look more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, there has to be not only a inner transformation, but an outward uh, expression of that inner transformation. So what we want to do now is I just want to go real quickly uh, to uh, the iPad and take a look at the uh, verse of Scripture that I'm referring to, at least part of that Scripture that I'm referring to, here it says, the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek shall inherit the earth. That's uh, from Matthew chapter 5, verse 5. It says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. For they shall inherit the earth. Now, you know, a lot of us have made reference to this particular uh, verse of scripture coming from uh, what we uh, refer to as the Sermon on the Mount. And that is a great uh, um, teaching from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ about the transformation that has to take care of, uh, take um, hold of humanity before we actually see the manifestation of God on the earth. Now, a lot of us have read the scriptures and we have interpreted as to be saying that Christ's return is coming. Christ will return physically and we'll see him descending from the heavens and uh, uh, then he's going to put all the enemies that, that um, under his footstool. I believe that uh, in further study, I, I believe that not discounting that return of Christ, I believe that he shall reign until, and, and reign until a transformation happens in the minds of those, of, uh, in the minds of his followers, that we will actually begin to have his mind in full expression through our physical and our spiritual behavior. And that that's why I believe this scripture stands out to me, especially in this day and time with the war that's happening in Israel, with the war that wars that's going on in Russia and the wars, other wars that's going on around the world, the threat of war. And for some reason, there is this human uh, expression of wanting to be in competition with other nations. I was doing a, a, a real uh, brief look at the global uh, position of different continents and how far away they are and how yet these continents and these governments are, are, are far away from each other. They're still in competition with each other, even to the point of wanting to destroy each other, which makes no sense to me. And then a lot of these wars are done in the name of God, whatever God they're worshiping. Sometimes it's the Christian God and then there's a Muslim God or whatever the, the particular God that is behind a particular uh, group of people in their thought process, they believe that this war is in his name and that they've been instructed by God to destroy the mega God, the demigods and the other false gods and false religions and false societies. And it's for them to purge the earth of this corruption. Well, in my study from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, I see a whole different picture of God and I see a whole different expression coming from Christ in his message to those who follow to him, even to this day. It may be difficult for people to get it, but I believe that if we, we, we anchor down and begin to focus on the words of Christ, there, there is a secret, there's a mystery that's even hidden in the scriptures, not only in the, whole, in the Bible, but in other sacred writings as well. There is the message of peace. There is the expression of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, I am of the conclusion that Jesus of Nazareth is the full expression of Christ that fully expresses the Son of God. And the Son of God is the image and likeness of our, of, of our Heavenly Father. That Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Christ comes to him, the Spirit of Christ, and expresses himself through Jesus of Nazareth. And he becomes the physical and spiritual manifestation of the image and the likeness of God. 
And I think that as we follow his instruction and allow the Spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit, to remind us of who we are and our position in Christ, then we will see ourselves, not only will our spiritual uh, um, uh, DNA be more manifested, but it will manifest through our physical essence. And people will see us not, uh, and see God through our expression, through our emotion. Physically, we will physically be the lights in this world. And that light is so attractive because attached to this identification is your divine right. Things that you will see and do and express, you will also express healing, deliverance, and the power of God flowing, flowing through you. Now, there has to be a particular mindset. It takes a, a it, take, it took time for us to get to where we are, and it's going to take some time for us to go to where God wants us to be. Because nothing happens on this planet apart from faith. And we will discuss that a little later on in another message. But nothing, I'm talking about absolutely nothing happens on this planet apart from faith. And we will uh, dissect that a little bit later. And how we should have the faith of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And once that faith is seen and demonstrated and is given to us free, we, we don't have to work for it. It is ours. Once we demonstrate this faith, and this love of God, it, 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 it will compel others to come from without, uh, or come out of their darkness into his marvelous light. And this light is healing. This light is, uh, it will transform us. This light is pleasurable. We humans were not created for stress or for what we call evil or hardships. We were created as the expression of God, as an extension of God. And we respond in our soul, in our bodies, and in our spirits to his love. It is, it'll be a concert. It'll become very harmonious in us. And the conflicts that we have in our mind, this false image that we painted in our minds, that we will discover the power that's within us to see the power of God manifest on the earth. That is the return of Christ. When all of creation is, is moaning and grating, waiting for the appearance of the Son of God, we are contributors to that appearance. We give ourselves to Christ. And what we need to do is allow the Spirit of God to transform us into his image and his likeness. Now, you, you, you got to volunteer. God is not just going to overwhelm you. He's not going to force his way on you. This is done not for, uh, by your choice. You have to choose this, and the love of God will receive and honor your choice. In fact, your life now is filled with your choices. <laughs> so hopefully, if we don't say that today, or talk about that today, or bring clarity to that statement, then we will do it, do it in the upcoming teaching. So take a, let's take a look at the eye there. <clears throat> Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the, the earth. Uh, as I wrote here, the verse came to me while I was uh, half asleep and half awake. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 12 through 15, it reads, And from the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and, and the law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear hear, uh, uh, let it hear. Now, these verses, I believe, have been misunderstood, used to stress a war view for years. Many believe that the kingdom of heaven has to be taken by force or should be protected with force. In other words, we have to fight for it. But I don't see it that way. What I see in these verses is that uh, correction is coming and John the Baptist is the forerunner to the Messiah who would bring the correction and guidance needed to enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, that's how I see this. Um, uh, I see that when Jesus comes, he, he's going to talk to us about learning from him and how to imitate him and show us the Father's heart because no one has seen the Father but the Son. And no one knows the Son but the Father. All right. And Jesus goes on, and we're going to get to that verse of Scripture. And it's whom he will reveal the Father to. 
I believe that we have this image, this worldly image of God that it has nothing in connection with the Father, the Heavenly Father that Jesus introduces to the world through his teaching. But through the Spirit of God and through those who are open-minded to lay aside their prejudice and their beliefs that they had up until a particular point, which is and that point is their point of enlightenment, you have to be willing to let it go. When you let it go, you begin to see scriptures differently, you see yourself differently, you see all of humanity differently. Uh, I, I, I thought about this for a while, and we will get into it. I'm just going to pass by it. When we, when we talk about our makeup, our, our three-dimensional makeup, being spirit, soul, and body. And the scriptures will talk about the, the soul, being, being soul conscious first. In many people's minds, we are our personalities, we are our egos, and we have a spirit, and we live in a body. There are few of us that see ourselves not as soul uh, uh, primarily, but spirit primarily. We are spirit, and we have a soul. We are spirit, and we have a soul. And the primary uh, leader, the primary teacher, the primary, uh, primary viewpoint is spiritual and not personality or not soulish. Some people call it solical in the past. I've called it solical in the past. And what that refers to into, in, in my language today, so that you understand what I'm saying to you, to be soulish or solical is to be ego, ego driven, I driven. To be I driven, I driven is me and my, it's, it's, it's I. And to be spiritual, you have to allow the spirit of Christ to be the dominant influence of your thought and the way that you see and the way that you think. You must put on the mind of Christ to be first spiritual, be a spirit that has a soul that lives in the body. And you will notice that that, that your lead person, your lead identity will actually influence your physical fruit. You will physically, over a period of time, your faith will grow and over a period of time you begin to see a physical manifestation of a spiritual premise and a, a, a premonition that you live, you live, preference that you're living from. I'm living from the spirit, which means I'm not walking by what I see with my senses because the soul is controlled by your senses and by these impulses and this outside energy, outside of yourself. The kingdom of God is within you and you can only see it by through your spirit that you're spiritual. Now, by being a spiritual person looking within yourself, you're going to identify not with the ego. You're going to identify with Christ because, in the, because Christ is the anointing of the Spirit of God, is the likeness of God. So as you begin to see yourself as Christ and the life of Christ in you, which is the gift of God, you will begin to transform your thought pattern. You begin to think differently, see life differently, and your expression is differently will be different. And it's going to come from a place of power and a place of certainty. Now, I know a lot of solical, egoic people do not like the word certain or certainty. But if you are tapped into the mind of God, and if you have one mind with God, and God knows all things, there's no way to be uncertain. You got all the information. You have all knowledge. You have all wisdom. You have all understanding. Because you, you are one mind with God. Your mind and his mind are one. They're, they're, they're connected in such a way that you can't, there's no seam between where he ends and you begin, or vice versa. Y'all are one. And this one harmonious mind is certain. And then when you walk from a place of certainty or knowing, knowing this, it's a whole different life. It's a whole different expression. And there is this flood of love that comes through you because the certain mind excuses the ignorance. The certain mind is a divine universal intelligence that all of us come from. All of us come, all of all things living comes from this universal certainty, uh, uh, this, this one-mindedness, if I can use that for a minute, that this one mindedness is God, this one, this energy, this intelligence that brought us forth, we are a part of that. And we got being a part of that uh, uh, certainty, this one mind and this one intelligence 
There's no longer darkness. There's no longer misstepping, misunderstanding. There is what we will call purposeful demonstrations and expressions of divine love. That is where we, that's where we are in Christ. But we have been put asleep and we have been captivated by a, a, um, a universal uh, uh, delusion that we think is real, but it's not. The power of the mind. I'm not talking about the brain. See, a lot of people think that the brain is my no. The the mind is much greater than the brain. It's not limited by brain power and what you learn or what you experience, what you feel. No, the mind is all inclusive, uh, with all knowledge, all spiritual wisdom and understanding. When you tap into the mind, you're greater than your experience. You're greater than your education. You are greater than what someone has told you. Now you into the mind, the the the, uh, the 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 ancient of time, the knowing of, of what what we in time would say the past, the present, and the future, the knowingness, the wisdom in the mind of God, which we have through Christ Jesus. There is no time. There is no time, and the most precious, important time is present. You always in the present. In the present, all your need is more. Is, is, is there and everything you need is present everything you need is now and when we stop living from remembering the past which is no longer there it's no longer real, uh, real or it wouldn't be the past so it's not real anymore it's not relevant anymore and stop fearing the unknown that's in the future as first time is concerned and we become very present very now motivated we will see the power of the now and how we have what we believe now because there's nothing in God's creation for us to work for. We will enter in his, into his rest and there's no need to war. There's no need to be destructive because we know the end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. So we know how it all works out. And in this knowing, we are resting in the finished work of our Father. He is our Heavenly Father. We are resting in that. Now, if you think about it, you know, the people that are aggressive, that, that are agitated, that are angry, that's warring against each other, they're going to kill and destroy one another. The bigger bomb, the bigger gun, the, uh, the, the strategy to, to, to totally annihilate a group of people off the face of the earth. Totally unforgiving, totally unloving, but they want to do this because they say they're protecting the promise of God. And that what they're protecting is a piece of land. Do you know the, the, the earth is, is God's and the fullness thereof? And that there's more than enough for all of humanity to have its portion. We don't have to war. We don't have to strive. We don't have to strive against anyone. It is what I would call modern day demonic to murder and kill children for any reason. Life is always more important than any political stand. Life is the most precious thing there is. And the law of life demands that the law of love operate through those who are connected to the law of life. And we'll find it in our scriptures, descriptions about love. And hopefully we will go over those scriptures again to renew those scriptures in your mind. But let's get back to this note right quick. The prophets uh, that came before pointed out that the, the signposts that announced the coming of the Messiah are, are the coming of the Lord. But now that we have arrived at our destination, we have no need for that type of prophetic word. And there is no further need for the law who was our tutor until Christ. Now that we have reached our destination, the prophets of old are no longer relevant. But, I'm sorry, before Christ we assume that the kingdom of God would establish itself like other kingdoms of this world uh, had established themselves. Jesus uh, um, brought us a different message, and people then and now may not be ready to receive his message. Most, if not all, Christians believe in a historical Jesus who has who was Christ manifested in the in the flesh. I want you. I want to uh, not stumble over this this particular part of my note. I want to get this, I want this to be 
to come home. Most, if not all, Christians believe in a historical Jesus who has who was Christ manifest in the flesh. When it comes to faith, this is a good starting point, but it is not enough for what we come to know as strong faith. This is a good starting point. Most, if not, I'm talking about Christians and other people who are not Christians, believe that Jesus is a historical being. There are people who don't even go to church. They even be in, except put in the church. They've done historical studies, religious studies, and they all conclude that Jesus of Nazareth is a historical reality, just like any other historical person. They also think that 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 he was a righteous man, that he's a he's a good man, he's a prophet. He brought clarity. He's one of uh, the uh, 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 best metaphysical teachers of all time. They believe all of this about Jesus. But what we need to understand, where we're going to, is that the work that he came to do, he finished. He reconnected humanity back with the Father. He's reconciled all souls back to the Father. Now, believe it or not, when he finished his work, all of creation, all of all of the earth fell into one spiritual condition. That one spiritual condition that all the earth fell into, come on now, I want you to hear me on this, that one spiritual condition that all the earth fell into is grace. <laughs> it's no longer about works. It's no longer keeping a score or uh, having a pendulum uh, effect. It's no longer it's a scale of good and evil. No, we all of creation fell into one spiritual uh, a proclamation and one spiritual law, which is the law of grace. And we receive the law of grace and the benefits of grace through faith. Now, both grace and faith is a gift from God. All we have to do is receive the grace and faith that we have from God. Amen? Now, if I can, I want to see if I can find this. Uh, uh, I just, just did this for this particular portion of our teaching. So let's go over here and take a look at this. Uh, no longer, uh, in Galatians, Galatians chapter uh, 2, verse 20, 21. Many of you that who are members of my church that's watching the video, will, are, we are very familiar with this verse of scripture. I've talked about this in past videos before as I'm talking about it this morning. Uh, this morning. And you know that we've been, um, I presented to our congregation that God, said that before I minister any teaching, uh, any sharing of the word of God or any thought that God given me, that I, I say this every Sunday and, and, and every Sunday we say this before I, I minister the word. Even I say this when I am asked to go out to minister, I make this scripture my proclamation. And so this is what we're saying and have been saying is finally getting through the nut. The, the shell of this nut is very thick. <laughs> so the revelation of his word is finally coming through. In Galatians 2, verse 20, 21, it reads, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God. Another translation says, by the faith of the Son of God. So they could, and, and both, both rend renderings bring the proper picture into mind that it's not I who live. That's the important part. It says, uh, the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died in vain. Now, this is something that I begin to say. It's my, it's, it's, it's modality, my mortality, uh, my confession, my, my, my thought, the way that I begin to meditate about who I am. Some words to keep me clear in my consciousness. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this, and I'm going to present this to you. I have been crucified, and it's the I. It's the I. It's the me. It's the my. I. You know, it's that I gets in the way. It's the identity that draws itself from outside uh, knowledge or outside information. Even thoughts are, are about yourself. It's influenced 
by other opinions, other opinions of who you are, other people's opinions of who you are. You might ask, like, what do you think of me? When you look at me, what do you see? And if it's someone whose opinion you value, you will adopt that opinion about yourself and begin to be transformed or to begin to enhance what you think about yourself. But it's not really who you are. It's not really coming from the mind of your father. He knew you. He thought you into existence. He knows his mind toward you. He knows his intent. He knows the reason that he thought you forth. And you're looking for your spiritual and your identity, your your eternal identity. And you're trying to draw it from how you feel. You're trying to uh, draw that identity from your choices of your career, what you buy, what you wear. All these things begin to uh, uh, express and, 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 and mimic falsely who you think you are. But there's no satisfaction there. There's still this undercurrent of some type of fear that I haven't really hit the, the hit the mark. I haven't hit the mark. I haven't hit the bullseye. That's what the word sin means. It, it means not hitting the bullseye, not getting it exactly right, feeling inadequate, feeling like I'm missing something. But you're not missing anything. Watch this. Listen to this. I have been crucified with Christ. So the I, your I, has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So no longer, and I just, I just exchanged, I just, I just repositioned my soulish idea of self, and I've given my, I've given the spirit creation that comes from my heavenly Father first position, first priority. Now I'm going to, pri I'm going to prioritize. What I think, not about my physical condition, not if, you know, oh, my back hurts, I can't see, I'm crippled, I got cancer, with all that other stuff, it's not my identity. It's an experience that I'm observing that, that, that this body is going through. The body, is, it may be weak. The body may have had a stroke. The body may have cancer. The body may have, have uh, heart conditions. Those are experiences, but they're not who you are. Those are experiences of what you, you, the real you, the observer, is observing this physical body in time go through, but it's not you. It doesn't define you. Your spirit, your Christness, your Christ-mindedness your, is your true identity. Watch this. Listen to this. It is no longer I who live. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me, and the life that is lived in this body is lived by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I has been crucified and will not see and will not set aside the grace of God. See, to, 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 to blame yourself, to feel guilty, to, to, to get to the point where I'm guilt-driven, I have to do this, I have to do that, you become a human doing instead of a human being. God has called you to be a human being and not a human doing. So when you become a human being, you will rest in his finished work. You will trust and have faith in God that every one of your need, known and unknown, has been met by God. I am who God says that I am. And when I begin to focus on that, that's what transformation happens. It's when you focused in your mind. It's the picture of your mind. When your mind is transformed, you will find that your experiences are transformed. Later on, we're going to talk about how to seed that, how, how to get how to, to plant a seed and have your Heavenly Father bring forth the seed of thought that you're planting. You are a thought. You are a word. And the word in your thought will manifest, become your reality. But you got to purposely be co-laboring with God, attached to his mind and his purpose for you, for you and being in time. When that's your purpose, when that's your mind, hey, things will change for you and you will see the change rapidly. Well, I had to stop right here. This is where I have to stop. We will pick this up. Uh, uh, this is Sunday morning and, and uh, we're going to have services later on today. In fact, let me talk about that a little bit. Uh, uh, I want to thank you. We are very, 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 very appreciative.
for those of you who have partnered with us. You know, I know that what I'm saying may look to be contrary to what other religious Christians and non-Christians are saying. But we really believe that the revelation that's coming to us is coming and spring, springing forth from our Heavenly Father. And it's our job, as it is with many other people, to be heritors of this truth. I'm not the only one hearing this, but in my limited connection and, and, and community, I, this message is not one that is supported. But you, those who have, 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 have heard the word of God, if this is ringing true inside me, this is true. I believe that this is what God would have us say, and I believe this is what God would, uh, would have us express to one another. This is the true love of God. And we want to support this message, and we want to know how we can physically, financially, I should say, support this message. So many of you are going to www.nccfc.net. There's no sponsors other than you. You are the sponsor of this message. If you don't go to www.ncc.net and hit that donation tab, then we don't have a sponsor. But if this is feeding you, this is a blessing to you, then you should help us by sponsoring us with any financial gift of any size, uh, any size I'm, I'm saying. And we will give an account of that. But you will make sure to go to www.nccfc.net and leave a donation. If that's not how you want to do it, your mindset may be, I want to send something physically. A money order, a check, large or small, send it to 2851 West 120th Street, Suite E, as in Edwards, 522 Hawthorne, California, 90250. There are many of you, not, when I say many, don't get this number of thousand notes, not, there are a few of you, I just say, that actually send in a tithe and offer because you're actually digital members. You don't physically come to the church. But you, you are listening to the message. You're tied into this. You are a member. And you made it known to my wife, Sister Wheat, Elizabeth Wheat, and myself that you are a member of the New Creation Christian Faith Center. That you are a tither. You're giving a tenth of what you, you're earning. And you're giving and an offering. You're sending it in. And you're sending it to 2851 West 120th Street, Suite E as in Edwards, uh, uh, 522 Hawthorne, California, 90250. Then there's others that will zeal, you're zealing us. That's the quickest way to get your love offerings and tithes to us. So you're zealing us, and, and you are, few of you, are zealing to us financial support, which is Sister Elizabeth Wheat at yahoo.com. Um, and then I also want to encourage those of you watching us by way of Facebook, because we, we, we broadcast simultaneously broadcast on Facebook and X, which used to be Twitter. So if you want to see this video again, it may be easier for you to go to YouTube, and our handle on YouTube is Will We 3 and that's where the library of our, our videos are. You can watch this video again, or other videos that we have in that library. And so that's youtube.com uh, forward slash Will We 3 Now, when you go there, don't forget to like the video. You're, you're not only helping us financially, but the likes help us in the algorithm of how they place the videos. If you help, you want to really help spread this, and you may not have it all together, and the explanation that I'm giving is new to you, but you really have some confidence in how God is leading me to teach a particular topic, well, have your friends and your family go to uh, the YouTube channel and like it. So that the other people that you don't even know will, because of the subject matter that we're talking about, will see the same message and get the same enlightenment that you're getting by you liking the video. Now, also, we want you to ring the bell. When you ring the bell, as many of you have, I'm sure not many, as a few of you have done, you are notified, okay, that a new video, a premiere, was going up at the, end of the time of that premiere. So you were able to tune in. So if this is your first time uh, watching us and you you and you and you uh, liked us, go ahead on and hit that bell and ring the bell. That way you'll be notified when we place new videos up, new messages for you to hear and to follow us as we follow Christ. Then do we also meet every Sunday morning? We meet in Inglewood, California. We are meeting uh, at three one five. South Market Street, Inglewood, California, 90301. This is not our church building. This is a building where we have rented space 
to have a meeting on Sunday so that those of us who want to physically gather, we can physically gather to see each other, shake each other's hands, and physically um, uh, be in the presence of the Word instead of the digital presentation. We have a physical presentation until we get our place, our own place, our own address. So we, we are meeting at 315 South Market Street, Inglewood, California. Come on in. Just when you get to the address, uh, it is a building that says Scientology. We're not teaching Scientology. We're not trying to uh, enlist people and members into the, the teaching of Scientology. It's a place that uh, afforded us a position on Sunday, a spot on Sunday to meet. So come and listen to the Word of God and be a part of what God is saying to each and every one of us. Amen. And you're like the people. We have wonderful people. And I would like to meet you. If you're watching us diligently, I've never met you. Come when you're in the Eagle area. Introduce yourself. My wife and I will be glad to see you and greet you. Amen. All right. Well, praise God. This brings us to the end of our teaching this morning. And hopefully uh, you will remember. And, and just hold this dear to your heart because it is so true. This is one truth I do not want you to let go of. God has plans for your life. And none of those plans include defeat. Till next time. Shalom.